EA Interviews, episode 54. Inspiration, transformation, success stories, and the imperfect action round. Seven days a week. Join Mario Ficini for today's Expert Authority Effect interview. Expert Authority World, I'm excited to be here with you for another great episode. I have Graham Reese, who is a fourth generation sheep and wool producer. He's going to be sharing with us from the Australian Outback. Now, the reason I wanted Graham on the show is he doesn't just know what he's doing with farming. He knows what he's doing with producing and with marketing. He was showing me some things before the before we started filming, and I'm excited for him to share with you how you can profit from livestock because he's not just doing one part of it. He's doing the whole spectrum of it, and he's going to be sharing with you the inside secrets. So I'm excited to bring him up right after we thank our sponsor. How would you like to grow your wealth easier than you think with the change you probably don't notice anyhow automatically? That's why I started the Compounding Interest Snowball, investing with acorns, and advise you do too. Get started simply and easily today at eainterviews.com forward slash acorns. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Mr. Graham Reese. Graham, how are you feeling today? I'm uh, really great, Mario. It's uh, great to talk to you across the pond. And, uh, you know, what I'm really excited about is is that I'm already in tomorrow here in Australia and uh, you're just, uh, you'll catch up. <laughs> I love it hearing when uh, when you talk about that and say across the pond, you know, a little, little bit about a body of water in there. But I want to ask you, why did you get into doing what you do? What inspired you to start your company? Uh, you you know, Mario, uh, I, I'd actually uh, grown up in a farming family and had spent all my life farming and thought that's what I was going to do, you know, just um, just round up sheep and, and uh, run a sheep uh, and wool business. However, in 1999, a, a, a US gentleman by the name of Bud Williams came out here to Australia and Bud uh, had spent all his life studying the way animals worked and, and also studying marketing. And and I was lucky enough to get four days with him on my farm. And that changed, changed my life and my wife's life in terms of uh, thinking about how we'd work animals in a low stress way. And, uh, and, and then also learning about his marketing knowledge. And so what happened is we, we needed to educate our kids. And so we moved away for a little bit and uh, had to do something. So I got teaching low stress stock handling and also teaching uh, the, the or developing the livestock marketing school with two with two other partners and 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 teaching that for the last fifteen years. So tell us about who you help and how you're helping them. Okay, so the people that I work with are livestock producers, and one of the biggest challenges in what I call the commodity market, which is where uh, you know most ranchers, most producers. Uh, reduce their, 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 their livestock or their produce and they just put it off to the market. And they're at the whim of market prices and we can't control that. We're price takers when we're in the commodity arena. And so what we do is we teach people that it's more about knowing what their cost of carry is, knowing how to, when, that, when they need to keep animals, when they need to sell animals and the thing they can control is their costs. And so that's, we spend two and a half days teaching people that, uh, really helping them uh, to build a more profitable business and how to make really good decisions. Are all of your clients uh, local to your area? Are they all over Australia? Who, who are you helping geographically? Yep. So we've got clients uh, right across Australia. I've just come back from Perth, which is Western Australia. So that's like going from LA to New York. It's uh, just as big a country. And, um, and, and, and then in Brisbane, we had people come out from South Africa. We've had uh, someone from the US come out. So we've got people sort of all over the world. And, and actually, we're looking to bring that program to the US next year. We're, we want to bring it home to uh, because Bud's passed away today, but his wife's still around. Sorry Eunice, to hear. So we want to bring that back. So the principles that you're teaching with your schooling really are essentially universal that you can take this globally correct they, they are and, and that's a really good point mario is a lot of people teach well i'm glad you um, i'm glad you're agreeing to it because it, it sounded like it but i was like i hope he doesn't say no <laughs> well you see a lot of people out there it doesn't matter what training arena it is people 
people that go to a course want a silver bullet. People, a lot of people teach silver bullets. However, when you teach to principles, so both programs we teach, the stock handling is, has seven principles and, and the marketing has five principles. And the thing about principles is they're universal all around the world. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter where you are. Those principles will work even in real estate because fundamentally it's about knowing the price of, of what you've got to sell, what it's going to cost you to say renovate that real estate and what it's going to cost you to buy that new one. And, and so we're trading the margins. We're not, we're not worried about what the market's going to do, something that's totally out of, out of our control. Can I get you to share a couple of those principles with us? Well, Maybe. yeah, if, if we talk, uh, so the farming one is one, the first principle is the most important one is called is balance your inventories of livestock, grass and money. And if, you know, for those people listening that maybe aren't a farmer, it makes logic that, uh, you know, most pr- farmers or ranchers think they're livestock producers, but actually they're grass producers. And we need to make sure we've got enough grass for the animals we have or we're going to get into trouble. So if we buy animals, in effect, we've sold grass and we've sold money for, to those animals we bought. So that's principle one. And, and, and it, it's fundamental to how, how you run a ranch or a livestock business. The, 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 I won't mention them all, but the fifth principle is know and understand yourself. And actually, it is the most important principle. Because everybody, when you work to principles, everybody's different. There's no, you know, people ring us up all the time. And I was, a, I, I had someone ring me the other day and they said, I went to your course for two and a half days and you got a lot of questions and you never answered one of them. All you did was ask a question back. And I think that's the whole point. We have, we have to become more, more independent. I love that. So if someone wants to know, I mean, straight up, you piqued my interest. Where can we find the other principles at? Are they on your website? Do you have a checklist? Uh, they got to come to the school. <laughs> um, no, no, they're, they're simple principles like every day we sell or buy, uh, know the price relationship between what we have to sell and buy today. So that's in the marketing. In, in the stock handling, uh, you know, I want, again, I won't go through all those principles because it, 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 that, that, that's a whole call in itself. But the one principle I would I always say to people is when pressure is applied, it must be released. The stock handling will work just as much with people. As you know, maybe you, you, you're probably a bit like me. You didn't work for anyone for very long because just you just can't work. What, what gave that away? <laughs> That's right. And uh, well, and, and, and so, well, you're not going to be mayor, mayor of Chicago if you uh, if you don't. Um, is it Chicago you're going to be mayor of? Yeah. Oh, Detroit. Detroit. Yeah, you're not going to be mayor of Detroit if you, if you just go and work a job. So, um, but in a workplace, you know, let's just apply it to people. If, if your boss is like, just what do you, you haven't done this, you haven't done that, you haven't done this, you know, really putting pressure on, then eventually you just bail and livestock are the same. Whereas when pressure is applied, you know, I say, hey, Mario, uh, how are you going on that project? And you give me an answer and I go, I go, okay, do you think you'll have a button by Tuesday? Okay, I'll see you Tuesday. So I've just put a bit of pressure on, but then I've released it and let you work away. And, and the livestock are the same. You see, the problem with livestock is, is that, you know, for tens of thousands of years, we've been predators wanting to eat them. And so they see us as a predator. And I, I take it that part of it is you have to train them that, you know, you're there to help them and take care of them at least for a little bit. Uh, it, it, well, the, the livestock program is a two day physical program, but it's, it's not about, it, it is partly about training the animals, but it's actually about training the people to work around animals, unlike a predator. And so, uh, um, you know, we teach people how to, how to, so it's not off. training the tra- animal, not training the animals to trust us more. It's being respectful towards them. So that way that, the, you know, you communicate on their natural level. Mm. It's a mutual. Fears. It's a mutual thing. It's a mutual thing. And and why I why I keep bringing it back to people is a lot of people listening to this may not be livestock or producers or ranchers, but it but at the core of it, it's that mutual respect and you know absolutely the same absolutely. way you treat people. There's a lot of people that look at others as predators, and you know someone's all let's you know let's 
let's throw ourselves at the will of here. You know, how many people look at marketers, quote unquote, and go, oh, they're just out to get something or they're just here to sell me. And it's like, no, marketing is storytelling to get you educated to go, hey, is this a good decision or not? That's a really, that's a really good point, Mario. And I think where marketers, um, you know, I did a program a long time ago called the Landmark Forum and, and they teach you there about there's two conversations. There's an enrollment conversation and there's a registration conversation. An enrollment conversation is leaving somebody touched, moved and inspired. A registration co- conversation is, hey, buy this thing. You know, most people just go out there and have a registration conversation. But my, my belief is if you go and do the enrollment conversation properly, they'll actually ask, where do I register? And I think that's so, so important in, in marketing. I would have to agree. I've been using an enrollment process for a couple of years with a qualifying for my master class and all that. And I'm hearing certain words you're saying in a new light that I've honestly never heard before. Because right now when you said enrollment versus registration, I just thought it's what everyone used. But I'm noticing more and more words specifically, you know, enrollment has a different connotation than registration. Is that is it connotation or denotation? I have no clue. Well, 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 yeah, and I think it's it's about being being interested in the person. Uh, you know, I, I heard recently the other day. You know, somebody somebody said when you meet somebody, just ask them five questions about themselves. You know, don't talk about the weather and the ridiculous stuff. Ask them five serious questions, and and you'll build rapport very very quickly. And I think that's. Um, I guess I don't know that whether that's something I I kind of have naturally or, or developed, but. You know, my wife and I fly fish and you would have no idea how many times we've been out fishing and, and talking to the, the guy next to us. And before long, we're actually staying at their house that night. You know, it's just just because we build a, we, we're just able to build that connection, whereas lots of people don't want to build those connections. And that's one of the reasons I wanted I invited you on the show, because I knew you had heart. I knew you were a great people person. And it's it's frankly one of the things I'm looking for just with people to even know is do they actually care about other people? Because I've ran into that in the past. You, you know, not everyone does. And I'm glad you touched upon the, you know, asking them about themselves. I uh, Matt, if you're listening, uh, my friend Matt Lang I've told him this story, and one of the things I tell people is when you're talking to someone for the first time, I've played a game to see how long I can go without talking about me because I don't really care about me. I care about you. I want to know about you, and some people, you'll go a minute or two, and they get like, you can watch their body language just get jittery. Like, why are they asking me questions? Because they're so used to surface stuff. Other people, um, they'll go 35 minutes just talking about themselves. They won't ask one question about you. And it's not that I'm hiding anything. It's more of a, do they even have the foresight to realize it's been 10, 15 minutes. They haven't asked me anything. I mean, I generally do care, but it's also somewhat of a qualifier to go, are you just going to be talking about you the whole time? Do you even care? And there's been people that are like, oh, I need your help. We need to talk. Da, 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 da. Here's my number. Give me a call. And they never even asked my name. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, now, what do you think the likelihood I'm going to stop everything I'm doing, stop helping all the people I'm helping, stop all the interviews I'm doing to help even more people, to call them to help them and they didn't ask my name? It's uh yeah it's it's so uh, it's it it is building that trust you know one of the things we offer our graduates of of the marketing school is is the the ability to join the mastermind and you know the mastermind's made up our mastermind we've been running that since two thousand and six I think it is it's made up of a lot of tools and and products but uh but it also is very much about a support network and you know when I'm when I'm uh, when I'm when I'm actually you know, sharing it at a school, I say to them, look, you can call me 24 seven. And they look at me like, what? And I go, well, it doesn't mean call me 24 seven. But if, if you found yourself in a situation where you didn't have anyone to talk to, and you needed to call me at two o'clock in the morning, then you call me. Now, no one ever has, but, but just having, and, and I'm genuine about that. And, and it's amazing, actually, people have called me about situations, and they say, 
I've called you because I don't have anyone else to ask this question to, you know, personal question. So it's not what we, we aim for, but, but it's about building, when you have that trust with people, uh, you know, you just know you're doing the job right. Yeah, it's about that core relationship, you know, being a human. I put something out earlier talking about, you know, when you're around impressive people, you have to be more than just impressive. So many people aim for just that. And it's like, be human, build a connection with them, find out what they're really about. Anyone can buy clothes or do their hair differently, but what is at their core? What are their dreams? So do you touch that in your two-day training? Uh, well, we, I, I tell you what, we, we're very transparent. So two of us do the, actually run the training program together so one will teach and then the other one teaches. And so that's good because you can bounce off each other. And so we're, we're very transparent about stuff. You know, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not hiding behind um, smoke and mirrors. We, you know, we, we tell the good, the bad and the ugly about ourselves and the, and the things that worked and that didn't work. And, and, um, and I think that's important as well to be transparent and, and uh, you know, it, we, we really do, uh, build that rapport with people and what's fun is when people get in the mastermind because we've got people that have been in there since 13 years I'm actually the other day in Perth there was a guy there and he he's been in there the whole time 13 years and uh, you know they become like family because you you get to know a lot about those people but you also uh, you know that you've actually been able to give some tools and principles to help them change their business and, ch and change their lives that's huge and I'm so glad you're doing it. Let me ask you, what's the biggest transformation you've seen from one of your clients or students, let's say, who came through your school? Look, I, I think uh, there's various there's various ones, but but I think the fun one is there was a young guy who was a web designer, and but he had this dream that he wanted to own some cattle. And I'd met this guy on Twitter, actually, and he, he had a bit of a go at, at marketing with me. And I said, well you can't really say that until you come and do one of my schools. And so he actually paid his money and came to the school. And at the end of the school, he came up to me and he said, you give a hundred percent money back guarantee. And I said, well, yeah, I do. And he said, well, I think I need to get my money back. Cause he said, I, I got no land. He said, I got no cattle. I don't know what I'm going to do with this knowledge. I said, well, how much money have you got? And he said, I got $7,000. And I said, okay. What if I give you uh, an honorary member, of, be an honorary member of the mastermind, and and I and I can tell you stories as we go along. And so, he became a member. He found some some custom grazing adjustment with one of our mastermind members, and with that seven thousand head, seven thousand dollars, <laughs> he went out and bought ten head of cattle. And over three years, he he didn't take any money out. He just kept putting his profits back in. Over three years, he built that to 70 odd head of cattle. And uh, I, I don't know what that would have been worth, but probably somewhere around $100,000. So there's a guy who didn't, didn't even know anything about livestock, but found a way to, to do it. And I think it just, that shows the exponential value of, of what we do. And he did do everything right because I, you know, I made sure he did, but he, he, um, that's, that's quite an amazing story. And if you take that out to a normal livestock producer, you know, they can, they can have huge, huge benefits. And what's the time frame on that? Because that is a huge about ROI. Three, three years? About three, about three years. And um, how old was he? Uh, he probably 25, 26. So he essentially has his entire life ahead of him to continue to generate more ROI on the initial investment. But even with that, it sounds like he 10 or 12 X his return. He did, and 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 to be fair, some of that was gifted by the market. The market rose, so some of it was, but not. But most of it was done just in selling ten, buying fifteen, selling fifteen, buying twenty four, selling twenty four, buying thirty five. So, so that's what's really helped him. The other, probably just another quick example of what's really helped people here in Australia right now. We've got pretty big drought areas. Some some have been in drought for seven years, but some for a couple of years. And, um, and the difference, you know, I mentioned that principle, balancing grass, money and livestock. So when they ran out of grass, they actually just sold their livestock and put the money in the, in, in the, in the bank. Contrasting that with some people who 
when they ran out of grass, they then took some of their money and went and bought hay and grain and fed their livestock. And, and then they've run out of money. And so the people, the people that are just balancing that grass money and livestock, especially through the drought, are in way better shape than, than, than people that are probably following a lot of the traditional ways of thinking. Let me ask you about reaping and sowing because it's absolutely a biblical principle and scriptural and, you know, people hear different variations. You get what you give and stuff like that. But there are, I don't know a ton of farmers in the U.S., but let me ask you about that because you just gave a good example about it, about, you know, tell me of uh, per, your perspective on reaping and sowing. Uh, well, I, on reaping and sowing, I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm not into producing grains or crops. However, uh, if, if, uh, if you don't reap anything, if you don't sow something. And so if we think about it in terms of marketing, you know, it's the work we do in, whether it be on social media, whether it be on branding, whether it be on, uh, on this show, this show is a good example. You know, here you are sowing the seed. You and I, we're having a discussion, both of us, and we're actually sowing the seed. And the, th the important thing there is, is you know, you, you just can't go out and harvest. You know, that's that registration conversation. Hey, let's go and get some clients. No, we've got, we've got to till the soil. We've got to fertilise the soil. We've got to sow the seeds. We've got to water those seeds. We've got to tend to tend, take the weeds out. It's a process that over a period of time, depending on, on, on the plant or depending on what we're doing in order to reap that harvest. And I think that's, that's you know, one of the most, I think farming can be used in, in all analogies, in marketing, in any business, because, you know, when you, when you sow that seed and you fertilise it and you look after that plant, especially if it was, a, say, a fruit plant, then it's going to give you fruit for years and years and years to come. Well, I appreciate your perspective on it because it's so fitting and you're right. You don't need to be a farmer to realize it, but too many people are the takers and to touch upon the transformational story with the gentleman, maybe the market did rise a little bit, but you said the key, he bought 10, uh, invested in 10, 10, bought 15, invested in 20, you know, 20, yep. bought 24. Now, maybe that would have taken him four or five years but he, what I heard is he started. He, he said, yeah. I had nothing, but he started. And there's people that go, well, this might take me eight or 10 years. Well, maybe the market four years from now will fluctuate. And because you decided to start paddling, a wave, wave, surfing a wave analogy, because you decided to start paddling and just get on the board, it will carry you a little bit more. There are these little boosts that you don't expect. But even if nothing does happen, Hey, maybe it would have taken five years, and now you did in three, three, four and a half. A rancher, a rancher shared shared that with me in the U.S. last year. He he said he said just start something and then manage it. You know, we we're actually very good at managing things. Once we get our, it doesn't matter whether it's good or bad. We manage our way through situations, but we're really poor at starting. You know, I can't I can't start until I've got this done. I haven't got my logo done. I can't start until. Till I know I'm perfect. I can't start. Look, I I was I talked to three thousand sheep for for most of my life, and then here I am teaching. And uh, you know, the first livestock marketing school I taught, if 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 I'd have taken any notice of the comments, I'd have given up because you know people basically said I I I probably would never make a teacher. But today, I don't know. You could put me in front of a thousand people. It doesn't bother me. I'll just talk. So, so you just start and you just keep on growing and learning and, 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 and you'll, you'll build your skills over time because you're managing your growth. I can relate that to when I'm helping my clients with their books and their videos and all of that stuff. What about this? The lights off, the cover's not done. You know, what's the biggest impact that your book has made for your business? Well, I, I haven't actually done a book myself, but I have a book here that my wife uh, has created this 243 page recipe book, which, uh, you know, there's a good example. She had no idea how to put together a recipe book. So much so she is a, she, she's an intuitive cook. So she doesn't measure anything when she cooks. She just tips stuff in and cooks these amazing, amazing things. 
And so when, when she was asked to put a recipe book together, there she is with sticky notes all over the kitchen because she had to write down everything she did. Then she didn't know how to use Facebook. And so she actually was posting those in a Facebook group and, and the pictures. She didn't know how to do, she didn't know how to do, um, do photographs. And, um, and, and so what did she have to do? She had to go and learn how to do, do photographs. I was just looking here, uh, find a, find a photograph here that's, so I don't know if you can see that anyone can see that there, but there's good. the layout. There's, look at that amazing photograph. And then on the other side is that. Now she, she didn't know how to do photographs, but she found an app on uh, called 30 app she photographed all those on on her own with her iphone there's a there's and, an app for a foodie yeah foodie app it's a photographing uh app and um and so there we are you know i'd be holding the light up here and she's got her phone so every one of those photos was taken there put so she put all those recipes together and then she's like well now it's got to go into a book what do you know about that and i, I don't know anything but as we have a, both have a, a mutual friend, Bruce Jones, and uh, so I tapped into Bruce, and he got me. He showed me how to how to use InDesign. He showed me how to use uh, Lightroom, and uh, you know, just got started. And we figured out how to put that book together, and we launched uh, we launched Be Inspired. It's a it's gluten free, grain free, dairy free, refined sugar free recipe book. And the first print run of seven hundred and fifty went out. We actually only got a couple left, so. Uh, and we haven't even launched it international. It's only launched in Australia right now. Wow, that's impressive. Let's talk about your training. How has your CDs, DVDs, all your training materials like you were holding up, how have those yep. impacted your students? Well, one of the things, one of the things, Mario, that I've done ever since 2006 is interview experts around those three things, grass, money, livestock, and people. And, and uh, so I've been able to interview experts all around the world. Uh, and, and when I get those, uh, I just do them on a teleconference system. But then, because a lot of my clients are, are farmers, guess what? Farmers spend a lot of time in their truck or their tractor and don't necessarily have good internet coverage. And back in the day, there wasn't iTunes anyway. But so what I, what I did is I, I turned them into, um, into CD packs. So inside there is four audio CDs. And I have over, uh, there's over 80 hours. I've put all the best ones on CD and I've over 80 hours on audio CD. And so people in my mastermind, they get access uh, to those. I send out a pack every month and, and uh, you know, that's a couple of years, isn't it? Then we've got the live ones. I mean, later on today, I'm interviewing, uh, interviewing, uh, somebody that'll go on a CD. Interviewing is a pretty fun process, isn't it? Oh, look, I I've met some amazing people and learnt learnt so so much. I'm a bit I'm a bit I'm, I suppose I'm a bit selfish in that way. You know, I I, I do these interviews because I interview the people I really want to listen to. But the other thing uh, I and I did the same last year. I took a trip to America and visiting a regener on regenerative agriculture visiting uh, 16 ranches. We started in Dallas, Texas, and we ended up uh, right up in top of Montana and finishing in Jackson Hole. And, um, and it, was, it was an amazing, amazing trip. But the places we went to visit were the people I wanted to visit. And it's the same this year. I'm going back again this year. And, and guess what? We're going to the people I want to visit. But I'm taking a group of people with me. And how much fun is that? That sounds like a lot of fun. I'm uh, going to call it audible here. Are you uh, ready for a challenge? I'm ready for a challenge. How are you interviewing the people you're with in person? How, how, uh, you said very, you, you normally do a tele, teleconference line. How are you doing? Yeah, very, people? very few because we just, we're, usually they're not, not close by, but uh, I have, I, I do do that occasionally. I'm like at the end of the, at the end of the trip, uh, which one? This, this one here, CD Pack 20. I sat down with one of the guys uh, on the trip. We sat down actually in Island Park, Idaho, Idaho and, uh, and we just had two microphones and we said, let's make a, make a CD of the trip. Four hours later, we had four CDs. So here, <laughs> here's, the, here's the challenge for this year's trip. Yep. What if I say you should do it on camera? Well, that's, that's uh, something that... Uh, I intended to do last year and I did day one and then it just kind of uh, didn't work because we just got too busy. But uh, the reason, the, uh, the, 
one of the reasons was that uh, uh, the people we visited were so personal in their sharing that it was for us and not for the public. But you turned into a CD, right? So, well, are you editing that that out? Yeah. That interview was, that interview was just with one of the guys that were traveling with me. And so we, we shared the things we thought were fine to share. So uh, I actually recorded that all, all that whole trip and I have that for the group that went, but I think uh, I'll tell you what I will, will do and what I'm going to do is, is I'll revisit those people on a teleconference. I, I intend to do a tele summit and revisit those people uh, because that's, what's great is, is when you get, get with someone and they share deep, deep, some of, some of their challenges, you know, it's just for us, it's not for the public. And so, you know, you kind of got to get, get that balance there of, of, um, of, you know, it's not just for everybody. So the reason I was bringing it up is because you're with the, because you're with them in person that's the biggest hurdle to get over doing something on video is how do I do this if you don't have both people in the shot? But since you're there, you could very easily just have a camera or a couple. Now, I'm I'm encouraging you, do it on video. That doesn't mean you have to stream it live. You can always edit the footage before it goes out public if they get into something, if they don't, don't consent to it, if they don't want to do it. But I, I was just saying the benefit you have is you know, I would love to have you in person like we've been at different events in the past. But when you have that live nature, I mean, if you're you, when you have that proximity, by all means, it's like I always keep a camera with me that you can just shoot something real quick if you need to. Yep. Yeah, that definitely. And I've got I have got a lot of that. But um, it's it's uh, it, it's something that that I, I like to do. It's 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 not difficult to do. But uh, yeah, and it, I think. That's what I, I love is, is how do we, you know, let's take regenerative agriculture because it is important. It is important for everybody, for everybody to understand what's happening in our whole, whole food system. Everything people are eating there in Detroit comes from a farm somewhere. And is it coming from a farm that's, that's, that's uh, you know, being managed in a healthy way? Is that food healthy or not healthy? And so that's something that... Um, uh, I think is is really really important, and how we get those messages out. You know, the guy I'm interviewing today is um, is a guy called Fred Provenza. Look at look at look at all my tabs here. Wow. And and uh, so Fred is uh, he he's it's an amazing book. It's called Nourishment. I recommend you read that. Everybody should read that book because what he what he says at the end of the book is is really. Uh, quite amazing. So I got a question for you. We're going to yep. jump into the imperfect action round in just a second, but I'm going to do another audible. What is your what is a favorite movie or song you'd recommend to someone? Favorite movie or a song? Well, I tell you what I <laughs> I actually have another question for you. I'll let you use one of those, but the real question I want to ask you is tell me something you haven't told anyone. Tell you something I haven't told anyone. Gosh, um, that's a, geez, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a big, big question. I'm, I'm so transparent. I know it's loaded. I, I have about tw- a dozen of these, and I'm like, I'm going to ask Graham this one. Let's see if I can do it. <laughs> uh, well, I haven't. Uh, it, something I haven't told anyone really is, is I do have this goal to, to run a, a, a big tally sum. Uh, and and linking human health back to soil health and doing something similar to what we're doing here, talking to all the experts around the world and pulling that together into, into probably, you know, 20 or even maybe 30 different speakers. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing that sincerely. Um, I would have let you use the movie or the, whatever the first thing I asked was as a backup, but sincerely, thank you. I would love to see that come to life. Well, yeah, and you know the the movie I've, I've just uh, uh, just watched. Uh, what's the movie with Lady Gaga? Uh, the, the the one that's going on right now. It's um, oh, with Bradley Cooper. Yeah, yeah. I I I I, I just love that. Just just for you know, I think it just brought forth Lady Gaga's story of somebody telling her she wouldn't 
she, you know, an ex-boyfriend telling her she'd never, never make, make a singer. And, and the fact that she didn't just make a singer, she made an amazing actress as well. And, uh, and my song, uh, John Lennon's Imagine, I, I think that's, I think that, that says a whole lot of, especially in the world we live today. You know, there's a new movie coming about. I thought it was going to be a documentary about uh, the Beatles. I, it's more of like a comedy thing, but it's called Yesterday coming out um, sometime soon. So we're going to go to the imperfect action round and we're going to come back and I've got some really pointed questions you can answer in 60 seconds. 60 we're going to come back with the imperfect action round. I got some questions you can answer in 60 seconds or less. I better get my pencil sharpener out. Invest automatically, save for later, and spend today. That's why I love Acorns. I used to think spare change didn't make a difference, and saving and investing was an old-fashioned manual process. It's not, and it's a game changer. If you're not leveraging compounding interest in your business and life, automatically, you're missing out. Acorns not only makes saving and investing easy and automatic, it makes it even more valuable by investing with diversified portfolios, spare change, extra cash, and rounding up everyday transactions. You can even set recurring monthly investments in the amount you desire. To make good great, there is also a debit card option that will continue to help you save and invest even further when you spend, plus no minimum balance and overdraft fees. Now, for the cherry on top. They have partnered with 250 plus companies and brands and growing with their found money program to invest back a percentage into your account with the everyday purchases when you shop. Two of which you're probably listening to this right now through an Amazon or Apple device. Get started profiting from your everyday life and business simply and easily today at eainterviews.com forward slash acorns. Once again, that's eainterviews.com forward slash acorns. All right, we're back with the imperfect action round. Graham, are you ready to take imperfect action? I'm ready to take imperfect action. All right, first question. What is the fastest path to the cash? Yeah, the fastest path to the cash is look at cutting costs. Lots of people try and figure out how they're going to get more customers, how they're going to make more money. But a lot of times, especially in a business, there's, there's a lot of costs there and every dollar you save is a dollar, a dollar added in profit. That's the fastest way to cash. Excellent. Number two, what is the biggest problem you see your prospects making and the fastest way they can fix it? Uh, the, I think the biggest problem uh, that most people have is the ability to make a decision. You know, lots of people, when they're confronted with a difficult decision, they don't make one. And I, I always say, well, that was a decision. And so it's, it's our ability. We need to grow. I don't think school prepares us very well for that. And so we need to, we need to grow and, and learn that in life, how to make a decision, how to, how to let something go and, and do something new. Very good. Number three, what is the question? Um, <laughs> oh, I know. Number three, what is the fastest way? What is the number three? What is the greatest way? The hell is the question? You want me to read you the question? <laughs> Holy smokes. I've only done this dozens and dozens of times. It's about customer lifetime value. Oh, maximizing it. That's the key word. Okay. All right. Number three, third time's a charm. <laughs> All right, number three, what is the greatest way to maximize your customer lifetime value? That's a, that's, that's a great question. And I think it's, it, it, starts, it starts right at the start. How you brand yourself is, is very important. You know, you, in, in this day and age, you need to be very transparent and, and be really clear when, you, when you're branding yourself in social media or however, however you're branding yourself. So that's the first, the first thing. Um, and then, uh, you know, when you've got, a, say, a membership site like, um, um, like our Mastermind, you've got a subscription program or something, people join for the program, but they stay for the community. And so how you develop that community is, is so, so important because if we don't develop a community in and around that, eventually, you know, the products fade away and, and people leave. I love it. Last thing, I, well, second from last thing. What is a number one 
book you could recommend? Well, uh, I know my daughter Ashley uh, was on here and she recommended Big Magic. And I got to say, you know, for, for everybody, that is an amazing, amazing book. I've got the audio book. It's by Elizabeth Gilbert. She wrote Eat, Pray, Love. And uh, I listened to the audio book. But it, it just, it, it, everybody that I've got to listen to it, when we have conversations, something happens, we go, wow, that's Big Magic at work. And, and I think it's, you know, it's about creativity and I highly recommend that. Um, I, but uh, I, I also, I, I really, really have loved this book. I did a series of quotes, uh, 30 quotes, a quote a day, because we have a, a book club called the Regen Ag Book Club. And I did, uh, I did a quote a day. And, and uh, you know, what he says at the end of the, end, end of the book, he, he basically says, you know, we, we come from the earth and then when we die, we basically uh, are back there to fertilise the earth and the plants and we become we become the plants and we become the animals. And I, I think, you know, we, we, we kind of get, have got isolated from that, especially in the last probably few hundred years. Well, I appreciate you for playing along because right when I was going, hey, what's a book you'd recommend? I'm sitting here thinking he already recommended a book. But um, yeah, yeah, big magic. Good. Uh, uh, it's, it's get the audio book. It, it, it is applicable no matter who you are to, to listen to that book. She reads it beautifully and, and it just – it's it's just an amazing book and, it, and and it's all about actually it's all about writing a book so people you work with would get a lot out of that well i appreciate the recommendation so where can people find more on you well the klr marketing school uh, it, it, it's on a website klrmarketing.com.au so uh, i'm i'm on the, on that website uh, they people can email me uh, or, or um uh, it, there's, con there's the contact details there. That's probably the, the best place. I think you'll probably have, uh, I sent you a bio, which will probably be in the show notes. Absolutely. On Facebook, they can uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, all of those places uh, I am. And uh, I, I, that's how I've built you know, hundreds of friends around the world uh, on social media. Excellent. Well, Graham, thank you so much. It has been a pleasure and Look forward to connecting with you further. So great to uh, to talk to you, and and uh, you know it's been a pleasure to to meet the the future mayor of De Detroit, and uh, I, I I love to have, love to talk to people with dreams. Oh, I appreciate that. We'll see you soon. Cool. Spare change? How's that going to make a difference? I know that's what I thought before I started investing with Acorns. Throwing change in a jar is not very leverage and time-consuming, but what about all the transactions you don't use cash for? You know, like majority? Acorns not only invest your spare change automatically with roundups, it also lets you add a preset amount to each transaction regardless. It's pretty inspiring to see how quickly and easily you can end up with a pile of cash instead of a pile of receipts. Get started simply and easily today at eainterviews.com forward slash acorns. Once again, that's eainterviews.com forward slash acorns.